Hello everybody, thank you very much for joining me. So today I am 39 weeks pregnant, exactly. Let me show you my baby bump. Baby is baking very nicely inside. I am feeling pretty humongous. These are all things that I have used, I think pretty much for the entire pregnancy. I'm basically like nine months pregnant now. And I think one of the most important things for me was to take my pregnancy kind of vitamins and minerals. Now they do the Pregnacare ones, which are like, I think eight or nine pounds, quite expensive for the 30 day supply. So the ones that I have been using is the Boots own brand. And it's got all the essentials like the folic acid, the zinc, the B12 and the iron. And it's like a fraction of the price. It's like three or four pounds and sometimes you can get it free for two. So I have been taking one of these every day. The capsules I will say are quite large. So you do need a big glass of water, um, but it's just reassuring to know that in case my diet is not encompassing all of the minerals and vitamins that I need, I'm getting it from here. And then because we do live in the UK and it's a pretty much a kind of sun starved co country, there's li it's literally raining now. I have also been taking vitamin D supplements. This is vitamin D3 and it's in the liquid capsule form. This is really good for like just generally your immune system, for bones, for loads of things. And then during pregnancy, your body uses up iron to make blood for yourself and for the baby. I've been taking an iron supplement and the one that I've been using is Spartone. It's a liquid iron and there are 14 sachets which look like this. You can get the plain one, which actually is very bitter and very metallic tasting. So I would definitely recommend getting the one which is infused with apple. It's much more palatable, but whatever way you take it, always have some orange juice and always take it first thing in the morning. And it just helps to build up your supplies, helps to avoid you becoming anemic. And I think these are a lot better than the iron tablets because I don't think your body can easily absorb that in, in the way that it does with this um, liquid form. So I've been taking this not every day, maybe every third day. So thinking back to the first trimester, I definitely suffered with morning sickness, pretty much felt nauseous up until the 13th or 14th week. It's like waking up with a hangover without the drink or the fun the night before. I think the main things that kind of got me through it were bananas, but just on the cusp of when they're ripe, and that really helped to calm my stomach down. Also, another really good thing is Oreos. So I said to the midwife, I'm really struggling, I don't know what to eat, and I'm worried that the baby's not getting the vital vitamins and, and minerals that it should be. And she suggested Oreos because they are fortified and it's quite palatable, it's quite a plain thing to eat. I did used to snack on Jacob's crackers, just the plain white crackers. I had them in a Tupperware box and I had them on the side of my desk at work. And actually it wasn't until a couple of months later until I had announced my pregnancy that one of my work colleagues said to me, I actually knew that you were pregnant because I saw the box of crackers on the side of your desk. And obviously crackers is a well-known kind of um, nauseous pregnancy snack then do be careful and keep your snacks in your drawer it might give the game away a little bit earlier than you want to. So during my first and second trimester, I was basically a raging hormonal mess and that kind of manifested in my skin. So I developed quite a few spots along my jawline, along this side of my cheek, um, behind my ears, very strange, and also at my temples. So I'd definitely say like a essential pregnancy thing to have is a good concealer. So the one that I recommend is Benefits Boing Concealer just here. You'll see it's quite a thick concealer. It kind of sticks and clings to your to the area, to the blemish, and it kind of doesn't get absorbed or eaten up as easily as a liquid one would. And then we come up to stretch marks. So I was pretty lucky in that I managed to get away with no stretch marks up until I think about week 28. And I honestly think it's a genetic thing. If your mum had it, my mum had it, you're probably more likely um, to develop them later on in pregnancy. And it doesn't really show early because you don't really grow that much. But in your third trimester, certainly my mine have really come out in all their glory. I'm very proud of them. I have no kind of um, issues with showing them off because they really are a medal of honor for me. I will share with you some of the lotions, potions and oils that I have really enjoyed using. So the first one is the Cocoa Butter stretch mark cream. I can't really say how effective these are to be honest with you. Like I say, I very much believe it's a genetic thing, but it certainly helps because you do feel very, very tight along your across your belly. And I found this really easy to rub in. I like this kind of pump action as well. It's really easy to kind of get out and just kind of rub on your stomach. You've got an oldie but a goodie here. Um, bio oil. This is very much a love or hate kind of thing because it does have mineral oil in it and it means that other things can't get absorbed deeper into the other layers of the skin. But sometimes I would just use this and then leave it for five minutes and then I'd go over it in bio oil and it would just feel like my tummy would feel extra lubricated. 
Something else that I have really enjoyed using is Neil's Yards Mother's Balm. This is about £20. It's really nice, you can see it's very well used and it's kind of like a grainy butter. It kind of feels like a, a grainy kind of exfoliating scrub but then what happens is um, it reacts with the heat of your hands and it totally melts. It's got a 100% organic blend of skin nourishing oils and beeswax. Another oil that I really enjoyed using, and actually I saw it being sold in the maternity section at John Lewis for like £30. I was like, hold on a minute, I've got that at home. And it's the Ordinary 100% Organic Rosehip Oil. I actually bought this to use on my face. I'll take a huge dollop of it in the pipette and I'll like literally just drip all over my belly and give it a good rub in. And it's really nice as well, it just lubricates the stomach. The last one that I've been using is the Mamma Mio, the Tummy Rub Butter. This smells like the sweet refresher, you know, the long blue sweetie, but it doesn't actually rub into your belly as easily as the others, so it's not as silky and smooth, so it smells great. Um, but you actually have to really kind of work it into your skin. So I probably wouldn't recommend that. Another, I would say, pregnancy essential, although I'm not sure how effective it is, is the Perineum Massage Oil. This is from Walida. And basically, you take a little bit of this on your fingers after you've had a shower. So you've got to make sure that your mini is completely clean and you basically massage the perineum which is the, the space in between your vagina and your anus. I don't know how effective it is in stretching that area and making it less likely for you to have an episiotomy but I'm willing to try it. I pretty much do this every other day. One thing that I have avoided during pregnancy is painting my fingernails and toenails. It's probably me being a little bit OCD but I just didn't want to have the chemicals in nail polishes which can be quite harsh being absorbed into my body and possibly by the baby as well so yeah I do recognize that's probably a little bit of my OCD but I have avoided that and I've just gone au naturel. If you're a Londoner or if you commute in the city that you live in you absolutely need one of these it's a baby on board badge if you're in your first second third trimester people should really be aware and give you their seat you know you are growing a human and you might not be showing in your first trimester sometimes it takes a long time for your bump to get out and this will save your life you do deserve a seat you need a seat okay let's talk about books and i think the number one book that i absolutely and highly recommend to any new mums out there is this book it's called the day by day pregnancy book by dr maggie blott and it basically talks you through each day of your pregnancy. I found it to be very comprehensive. There's lots of pictures in here, tips. It basically talks you through every stage of your pregnancy. It's, it's absolutely fascinating. So that is at five weeks and five days. And then you go to your 25th week and you have the pictorial representation of what the baby looks like. And it's just truly informative. It's kind of like an encyclopedia, but it's really easy because you just read it on a day-by-day -day basis. Here we go. This is my 40th week now, and that's what the baby looks like. And it's just amazing to kind of chart the journey of what your baby kind of has come from, a little egg and a sperm, to this big whopper in your uterus so I can't really recommend this highly enough it also talks about drugs for pain relief options for labour another book that I've enjoyed dipping in and out of is How to Grow a Baby and Push It Out by Clemmie Hooper she is a midwife she's also a blogger she's mother of daughters on Instagram it kind of reads for me like a blog post kind of book so she is the author of the blog Gas and Air and I would say these are kind of things to consider but I just found this way more comprehensive so it depends what kind of way you want to read and obtain your information if you want it concise day by day really kind of informative and intense then I would suggest this if you just want a kind of a general idea then I would say this would be really good Mel bought this it's the bloke's guide to pregnancy and he really enjoyed this I actually think it really helped us to connect as well he certainly had a bit of ostrich syndrome in the first 12 weeks. So what I mean by that is he had his head in the sand because of what happened before, because of the miscarriage. I think he was petrified that the same thing was going to happen again. He kind of clammed up and closed down emotionally. And this helped him to realise what I was going through, like the fragility of my emotions. He was like, oh, I read this in the book and, you know, can I do this? Can I give you a massage? And just little things like that really kind of helped during the early stages. So I went into Marks and Spencers and wanted to be fitted for a maternity bra and the lady said to me, instead of buying three or four maternity bras at different stages of your pregnancy, 
just invest in these. They are nursing bras, they come in the sizes small, medium and large, you get them in a pack of two and basically they've been absolutely fine throughout my pregnancy, um, I've just adjust adjusted the strap at the back, they're super comfy, they kind of wear like a sports bra so I feel very well supported and I can use it beyond when I'm nursing the baby and they're just really practical and you don't have to keep them buying sizes up. Before I became pregnant I was an avid thong wearer, I used to just wear black thongs every day and then I realised that it probably wasn't very practical so um, I bought some big knickers <laughs> from Marks and Spencers and these are kind of like shorts so they come in a pack of five, they're super comfy, um, they're not hideously ugly and they're, they're just really nice. One thing that I've absolutely lived in is these black maternity leggings, you've got the extra um, panels just here to accommodate your bump. I've basically been wearing these since week eight and they still fit. They're so kind of stretchy. They're thicker than your normal leggings so you don't see all the kind of lumps and bumps but they've been great for work because they're black, they're smart. One thing that I think every pregnant woman should invest in is a pregnancy support pillow. So for the first two or three months of my pregnancy I really suffered with not sleeping very well because the advice is to sleep on your side, never on your back. If you sleep on your back it can compress the main artery that feeds into the uterus something might happen to the baby but then it's really hard because when you're sleeping um, I naturally fall onto my back and I'd wake up in a real panic so my friend gave me her pregnancy support pillow and I have literally had the best night's sleep ever since using it and it's fantastic because I'm so heavily pregnant now and I can sleep like an absolute log I'm banking all my sleep in now because I know once the baby comes I'm going to be so sleep deprived and be like a zombie good thing about this is if I sleep on this side I can put the pillow in between my legs so it equalizes my hips and then I can tuck this back bit in so that um, I don't roll onto my back which isn't good they don't advise that you do that so that's why this pillow is amazing so I'm someone who loves taking photos and videos so what I have done is upgraded my phone and now I've got an iPhone XR there's a there's a picture of our baby that was at 20 weeks and I can't tell you how happy I am with the choice that I made. I did have the option of getting the X but I think the only main difference was that the rear camera was like a dual thing. If you wanted to zoom in on a landscape or something that was what it was good for but for me the XR is absolutely fine. It's got the same selfie camera which is excellent and it's a bigger phone as well you've got like a bigger screen space which I really enjoyed I've also got this really nice case from Amazon which I will link everything down in the description bar below I know that I can take really good quality pictures it's 12 megapixels without having to carry around my digital camera and lastly I just wanted to recommend a couple of websites that I found really useful in tracking the baby's development and how my body's changing I've enjoyed using the NHS website start for life and Tommy's website and in terms of app I'm actually using my peer period tracker app just here. It's actually in pregnancy mode at the moment but it's got a really nice graphic of how big the baby is and what the baby looks like. Pregnancy plus just here has been really good and it also tells you on here how big the baby is in terms of like the size of a fruit. So at the moment the baby is the size of a watermelon. Certainly feels like it. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and picked up some tips and tricks. If you're pregnant, many congratulations to you. It's such a special but fleeting time in your life, so enjoy every minute. And you know what? Your body is going through some monumental changes, and I hope that some of the pregnancy essentials that have helped me in my pregnancy can also help you. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you very, very soon. Love from me and my mum. Bye!